Speak slowly. Uh, what about you guys? Do you think I should speak slowly or do you think he needs to listen faster? Don't answer. Pocket Now Daily equals Pocket Now Rumors, and there's kind of a reason why we didn't call it Pocket Now News, dude. Hey, man, can you do a Pocket Now Daily but drunk? And I'd need to stop drinking Miller Lite for that to happen. That's right, it's that time of the week. I am Jaime Rivera, this is Pocket Now, and this is the Pocket Now Daily recap for last week. So on Monday, I asked you if you're waiting for the 5.5 inch iPhone 6 phablet as the rumors are that apparently Apple won't launch it until 2015 and new reports say that it's actually part of a strategy. And we have 504 comments out of which one of them says, who thinks the iPhone phablet will cost a thousand dollars? And uh, dude, you know, it's really a problem in most countries that are not the United States where iPhones are sold at a really expensive price. But in the United States, the iPhone costs pretty much the same as almost every other phone out there. Surely Apple could probably sell it expensive but I don't think Apple will be able to compete that way. Then Lauren says, I'm waiting for the 5.5 inch iPhone 6 so badly, but if it's not out by September, and if it's confirmed that it won't happen until 2015, which that's not gonna happen, I'll just cave and get the 4.7 inch, but I'll wait if the features are a handful compared to the 4.7 inch, and most likely that's gonna be the case. I think that the difference between one phone and the other is just gonna be the size. I think that the features are most likely gonna be the same, and Apple is just gonna wanna give you the option to buy one or the other, but we could be wrong. Then another commenter says, iPhone 5.5 inch or Galaxy Note 4. I think it's a no-brainer. There's only one phablet ruling the market, and it's the Note 4. Um, I am going to give you that one. The Note 4 is probably one of the phones that I'm most waiting for. I love the Galaxy Note lineup. I've loved it ever since the second generation I've been using it constantly. I don't think that we want bigger phones. We want bigger phones if they are more useful. And I don't mind putting up with the size of the Galaxy Note 4 because of the S Pen and because of the multitasking and stuff like that. But, you know, unless Apple figures that out, out. I don't want a bloated iPhone. That's just my case as well. Then on Tuesday, I asked you, what did you think about Amazon products lately as the news were that the company had just hired the product leader from Google Glass into working into Amazon Labs? And we have 227 comments out of which Daniel says, Amazon Glass, anything you look at will be added to your cart. And I do feel those same thoughts as well. Amazon is really crazy into thinking that people are willing to buy anything in order to buy everything from them. Then Mr. Jeff says, Amazon should be concentrating on delivery drones. Leave the cell phones and tablets to Samsung and Apple. And this is a great comment. This is a great point. I mean, think about it. This is like Starbucks selling you a phone, you know, at the same price as an iPhone for you to just buy them coffee. Not everybody wants to spend their entire day shopping and not everybody wants to do it buying from Amazon and getting it two days later. Then Rado says, I think someone at Amazon needs to get fired. This has gone far enough and I do agree. Not that somebody needs to get fired, but Jeff Bezos, really think about it. Uh, Amazon needs to focus on their core business and fine, you're looking for new ways to distribute you know, new ways for people to acquire your products. That's fine, that's decent, but I would focus on building better applications for people to consume on your current phone than to try to find the way to convince somebody to pay so much money for a phone. Then on Wednesday, I asked you how much would you be willing to pay for a good pair of headphones as the news were that Samsung was launching its Samsung level audio products in the United States for prices of $180 for wired, almost $400 for wireless. We have 660 comments out of which Lazarus says $20, no more for wired, $60 for wireless. And you know, most people are like that. $60, you can find a really good pair of headphones for 60 bucks. Uh, of course, I'm not an audiophile, so I can't be the expert to tell you if they're great. Uh, but it's really hard. I mean, I feel that sound quality is something that depends on the person. Some people love bass, some people love fidelity. I love fidelity, for example. I'm not really into bass, so I really wouldn't pay that crazy amount of money for Beats headphones that just give me great bass, and the other things are really not left out, but not given as much importance. Then Michael Best says $350 for Samsung headphones. These people have got to stop smoking that stuff. And you know, Michael, a lot of people out there want to buy headphones that are expensive. I've seen $650 for headphones, $1,000 for headphones, and there is a market of people out there that actually buy that. Yes, I do consider it crazy. I wouldn't do it, I do agree with you, but then again, the problem is there is a market out there. And then Rennie says, I paid $170 for Jaybird Blue Bud wireless headphones and I don't regret it. 
I paid $150 for a pair of Bose headphones that were good for running because they were really good for handling sweat and they were waterproof. And I do not regret it either because I had already paid like $100 buying headphones almost every month because the others would break. So there are products out there that do have a point and a reason for being in which I don't mind buying for a more expensive price. But then again, for just uh, unproven audio quality, that's a tough one. Then on Thursday, I asked you, have you ever tried surviving with an iPad or tablet for a day? As uh, the news were that Tim Cook had just said on an interview that he spends 80% of his time using an iPad only and that he's able to survive just fine. We have 605 comments out of which Leandro says, when your job is just to read and reply to emails, it's easy to work from an iPad only. And dude, this is probably the best comment of the week. You're right. It depends on what you do. And if you're Tim Cook, you probably have three assistants uh, that do all the hard work for you. You have all your VPs that send you all your reports and all you have to do is read the emails, look at the charts and respond and reply and confirm. So I do agree. If you're Tim Cook, then of course, living with an iPad is fine. But Michael B says, I have two tablets, an iPad mini and a Nexus 7. I have a laptop and I've had it for three years, but I only use it maybe once a month. I use my tablets for everything. And you know, Michael, that's really the reason why Apple launched tablets. There is a huge market out there of people that don't really need a computer. They need something to read email, to watch a movie, to surf the web. So tablets serve them just fine. There is a huge market out there, but I particularly am not part of that market. That's really the problem. And then Vladi says, try to play Battlefield 3 or 4 on an iPad. Try to root your device using an iPad. Try to flash a ROM. You get the idea. And of course, we all get the idea. There is a market of people that cannot live with a content consumption device. Again, I am part of that market. So yeah, your comment is extremely valid. And finally, on Friday, I asked you, would you pick the Samsung Gear Live or would you prefer the Gear Tizen products that Samsung has? As Google is not too happy with Samsung's offerings, but mainly because Samsung is pushing marketing more for its Gear Tizen models than the Gear Live. We have 349 comments out of which Bobby says, I like the Tizen Gear 2. I own it and it's great. Better battery life, heart rate sensor, IR blaster, a camera. All the things that the Gear Live doesn't have and you have a tremendous point there. It costs you almost the same price to buy a Gear 2, so why would you buy a Gear Live? And the only reason would be Android Wear, which really depends on your taste. Then JP says, I prefer the Samsung Gear Tizen. Let's be honest, it does much more than the Gear Live. Let's not be fangirls here, whatever. Uh, the point being is he has the problem is Android Wear is still in its infancy. You watch our review from Michael Fisher and he'll tell you that. The biggest problem with Android Wear is that there's a lot of promise, but the promise is not there. So is it really worth it for you to invest the money now? And you've got a point there. Then Joaquin Aria says, I don't think Tizen is good OS for watches. I'd rather prefer Android Wear. I do agree with you on this one in the fact that Android Wear has more future. It's great because Google only focuses on Android. Samsung mainly focuses on hardware and surely they've got their software department but because there will be more OEMs adopting Android Wear eventually then it has a broader scope of growth than whatever you could focus on from Samsung even though Samsung does sell more of everything than even Google does. So, you know, it's a hard topic there. I would prefer Android Wear personally because I'm not really stuck into the Samsung ecosystem, but it really depends on you. That's it for our Pocket Now Daily Recap. Thank you very much for watching. A couple of tips if you want your comments to be featured. Number one, keep them short. Number two, stick to the point. Number three, try to get some thumbs up. It helps us spot them a lot easier. You can also follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. You can follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I am Jaime Rivera. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you next week.